Our text for our consideration tonight is taken from the book of the first chronicle of the kings, the 19th chapter, the ninth verse and following. <clears throat> and there he went into a cave and spent the night in that place. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him and he said to him, what are you doing here, Elijah? So he said, I've been very zealous for the Lord God of hosts, for the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant torn down your altars and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left and they seek to take my life. Then he said, go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by and a great and strong wind tore into the mountains and broke the rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after an, the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still small voice. So it was when Elijah heard it that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entrance of the cave. Suddenly a voice came to him and said, what are you doing here, Elijah? And he said, I've been very zealous for the Lord God of hosts because the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, torn down your altars and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left and they seek to take my life. And the Lord said to him, go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when you arrive, anoint Hazael as king over Syria. Also, you shall anoint Jehu, the son of Nimshi, as king over Israel. And Elisha, the son of Shaphat, of Abel-Maholah, you shall anoint as prophet in your place. It shall be that whoever escapes the sword of Hazael, Jehu will kill. And whoever escapes the sword of Jehu, Elisha will kill. Yet I have reserved 7,000 in Israel, all whose knees have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. Here ends the word. Heavenly Father, sanctify us in the truth. Your word is truth. And now may the words from my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. At some point in our lives, we've all felt this way, whether it's the last several years and being frustrated, maybe it happened this week. And in talking with my children, it happens more often than we want to admit, doesn't it? Talia's had a big brother at prep for at least four years and another big brother watching over her, even as she starts her high school career. And yet we got the call back, call from her this week. Some boy asked me on a walk back, mom. And her big brother, Matthew, was warning her about that for years. And yet when it happened, she had to call. There's a lot of times in our lives where it doesn't work out like we thought it would. Matthew found that out this week as his roommate already gave up for the year and packed up and went home on Friday. There are times when we've all been at my wit's end. We've all been there and we'll go through some examples of that as we go. And it's amazing, there's scientific studies, there's psychological studies that seven times someone would have to compliment you to undo one negative criticism. That negative criticism carries more power in our world today than seven good words of accomplishment and encouragement. Well, if things were not going the way Elijah expected them to go. For seven years, Elijah had been on the run, except it wasn't really on the run like we think about running from town to town, from house to house, from situation to situation. Elijah had declared that there would be a drought. And early on during the first years of the drought, he simply lived by the brook Kidron 
and birds came to him with scraps of food, feeding him until the brook ran dry and the birds stopped finding food. And all of this the Lord had done because the king and queen, Ahab and Jezebel, were so wicked and had killed off many of the prophets and had installed worshipers of Baal in the place of God in Israel. God was sick of it. So he said, you'll regret it. I will stop the water from coming for years. Finally, when Isaiah, or when Elijah was not fed anymore by the birds, by the ravens and the scavengers, birds that could find the food, he went out of the land of Israel and found a woman, a widow, who had a son, and he asked her to make him some bread. And she said, no, I have a little oil and a little flour. I'm going to make one last meal for my son and myself, and then we're going to die. And Elijah says, no, you won't die. God will give you flour and oil so that you'll always be able to make bread. As long as you also make bread for me and keep me alive. And so Elijah stayed with the widow. Until one day the widow's son even died and she came to him angry at him. Why did you do this, son of man, son of or prophet of God? My son was going to die. Why didn't you just let me die with him years ago? And so I, Elijah had built an upper room, someplace separate from the woman and her son. And he took the boy up to that upper room and stretched out on him using his heat to revive the boy, and the boy came back to life. Can you imagine being a preacher for seven years, not really preaching to anybody? Kind of like how the whole COVID thing started, didn't it? Well, pastor, what are you doing? Well, they shut the church down. What am I supposed to do? Do you think things happened the way Elijah was wanting them to happen? Who is he supposed to preach to? The birds? At least there was a widow and her son in the last part of the drought. But these weren't even Israelites. These were foreigners. And God uses this pact against Israel several times throughout Scripture. That God didn't send Elijah to live with one of you. Things were so bad in Israel, he sent him out of the country to live with a foreigner. And finally, things had changed. God said, go, there's going to be rain again in Israel. I'm going to lift the drought. But go challenge the prophets of Baal on Mount Carmel. And one of the reasons they had to go to Mount Carmel was because Elijah wanted to dose his sacrifice with water. And since there wasn't any water, they had to go up on a mountain where there was snowfall, at least, to get the water from. And so we all hopefully know the story how God sent fire from heaven to consume Elijah's sacrifice doused with water. But the prophets of Baal couldn't get their God's attention. And so God ordered that they be destroyed by the sword. Finally, things were going the right direction again for Elijah. I'm hopefully going to be able to preach and teach again. And Jezebel threatened me again. And he took off running. He had just seen fire from heaven come down. 
And the queen threatened him, so he took off running. And he was exhausted on the way, so God provided him a special meal to sustain him. And he ran all the way down to the same mountain that Moses had ascended. It's called Mount Horeb. It's also called Mount Sinai in Scripture. And he sat in the cave and pouted. I have been very zealous for the Lord. But I am all alone and they seek to take my life. Oh, how many times have we been in that same situation? Where Satan tempts us to think that we're all alone. We often are in that situation politically with all the craziness going on in our world. Why isn't somebody going to stop that crazy idiot in Russia? What's going to go on with our economy, the way things are being spent? Are we alone? Doesn't God care? Doesn't he see what's going on? Have you been downtown lately and seen the people? I was out studying the other night. I don't know what came into the restaurant. I'll put it that way. But it wasn't looking good, that's for sure. And we might be tempted to say, Lord, what the heck is going on? Don't you see what's going on in our world? How crazy things are? How many people will not listen to you? Oh, there's a big one, huh? In our world today, even how many churches don't care what you say? We've been in this spot. And when we think that we're all alone, when we think that everything's gone to hell, has, God has to come to us too and say, wait a minute, what are you doing here? And maybe it's not a physical place, maybe it's a mental state. What are you doing here? There's something awesome that God does with Elijah here. Elijah goes through his rant, and the Lord listens patiently. And then the Lord tries to get Elijah's attention. He sends a wind. But it says that God was not in the wind. And he sends a fire, and he sends an earthquake, and he sends all of these three. Natural disasters, but God wasn't in any of them. And there's a problem sometimes as far as we are concerned. There's times that we want to see the fireworks. We want to see God demonstrate his power. Come down and rage against those that rage against him. Why, Lord, aren't you giving this power to your church? And he comes to Elijah in a still, small voice, and he said, What are you doing here, Elijah? Don't you understand how this works? I can do more in a still, small voice
Faith comes by hearing the message. And are there some out there that are not going to listen to the message? Yes. But we forget sometimes that when one sinner repents, the angels in heaven dance for joy. That the Lord left the 99 and went out after the one. And so he listens to Elijah rant again, and he says, go, get back to work. Anoint a new king in Syria, anoint a new king in Israel, and anoint your replacement because you're not going to be here a whole lot longer. Anoint Elisha to follow you, to be prophet when you are gone. There's got to be a little switch there, isn't it? A <laughs> little bit of a, okay, I will get back to work, Lord. Um, I didn't see it. How could I not realize that you could protect me from Jezebel? In fact, Jehu would be on his way to kill Jezebel and she wouldn't even live long enough for him to do it. Her own people rebelled against her and threw her out the window, killing her. What does God speak to us today? He said, yeah, I come in a still small voice. But that voice has power. That voice reminds you who's in charge. I have not left you alone. There are other believers around you. People that when things go bad, you know who to go to. That's one of the hardest things as a pastor for so many years, that when things go bad for some people, they just turn away from God. And the people who are there to help them. As the song says, looking for love in all the wrong places. He lets Elijah know that he was in charge. He was going to replace Elijah. And I will be honest with you, working for the Lord is always strange. Because we expect results. We expect fireworks. And there's times when I even, I feel like, geez, Lord, I'm banging my head against the wall here. Many situations that I've been a pastor where, how do I get through to this person? Because it just doesn't seem like they're getting it. Because the next week I'm going to be back having the same conversation with them all over again. And we're going to keep starting all over. But God works in that still small voice. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. You are mine. God be praised. Amen. Now may the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen us, keep us, and sustain us until we are in your arms, Lord Jesus, forever. Amen.